In this video, we're going to take a look at how to draw with pastel pencils and in the process we'll complete a still life. I have three different brands of pastel pencils that I'll be using. The first brand is by Conte Apri. I'll also be using pastel pencils by Derwent. And then we have a very inexpensive option. These are by Royal. We'll start by lightly drawing out the contours of the basic shapes of the objects. Since we're doing a lemon and two limes, these are very simple shapes. In fact, they're just basically ovals. Now I'm using a black pencil to do this. Typically I won't use a black pencil, but in this case we're going to be layering lots of colors over the top, so it should mute the intensity of the black. I'm working on Canson Mitant's pastel paper for this demonstration. This paper features a heavier toothed side and a smoother side. In this case, I'm using the smoother side of the paper. I'm going to indicate a little bit of the coarse shadow that exists using the black pencil. Then I'm going to start with the lemon, and I'm going to start heavily applying uh, an application of yellow. In this case, the color is deep cadmium. Once my initial application has been applied, I'm going to go back with a dark brown. This is dark umber. And I'm going to start to create somewhat of a texture on the lemon. We're going to build up the illusion of the texture on the lemon by varying the marks that we place on the surface. In this case, I'm making marks with the dark umber, but I am allowing some of the yellow to show through. We'll also apply just a bit of yellow green to indicate the very tip of the lemon. And then I'm going to go back with that deep cadmium and I'm going to go right over the top of the areas that I've applied with the dark brown. This is going to allow those colors to mix right on the surface without any smudging or smearing. I'll use white to accentuate the tip and then I'll start to use the white to create some of the texture there at the end. To create additional contrast, I'll go back with the dark umber. Now I'll use the deep cadmium and go over the entire body of the lemon, covering up all of the dark umber. Some of the texture will still show through. I'm going to continue to build up the texture through each application. In this case, I'll add a bit of dark umber followed by a bit of orange. Having a little bit of variation in the color on the lemon is going to help to make it look a bit more believable and realistic. In this particular example, the contrast between the dark shadows and the highlights is particularly strong. So I'm going to go back with black, but I'm not going to leave the black on the surface. I'll go back with the deep cadmium and go over the top of it. This in turn will create a dark yellow instead of having that really strong black on the surface, which can be distracting and make an image look flat. Now we're going to continue to push the illusion of texture, this time with the lighter values. I'll use white and I'll start in the area of strongest highlight and create a textured pattern uh, accentuating out from that center area of highlight. It's the contrast in value that's ultimately going to lead to the illusion of texture. So we'll build up the darker values and the lighter values and allow the marks that we make to create that illusion of texture. So as I apply the white, I'm varying the intensity of pressure that I put on the pencil, creating a range of value within the lighter values. We'll continue this patterning all the way over to where it meets the darker values. With the lemon in place, we'll move on to our limes. I'm going to use Hooker's Green and cover the entire body of both of the limes. This essentially is just an initial application. Now we're ready to start to develop the values on the lime. We'll start by adding deep cadmium in the areas of highlight. We'll contrast that by developing the darker values, in this case with dark umber. Here again we'll apply the material creating a pattern texture. Now we'll add the hooker's green right on top of the areas of dark umber. The 
And here again, we'll push the value contrast by adding a bit of black. Now, we won't allow this black to sit on the surface either. Later in the drawing, we'll go back on top of it with Hooker's Green to tone down the contrast. We'll also use light yellow green in areas to create a bit of texture. Of course, this is added in the areas of lighter value, but it also extends into the edges of the darker values. We'll allow some of the lighter marks to find their way into the areas of darker value. This will help create the illusion of the texture of the lime. Now we'll go back over some of our highlighted areas with the deep cadmium yellow. And then just as we did with the lemon, we're going to enhance some of the highlighted areas and further the illusion of texture using a white. Next, we'll develop the tip of the lime and we'll use sienna for this. At first, this color will look unnatural, so we'll tone it down with a bit of white. Now we'll move on to our second lime and we'll approach this lime in the same way that we did the first. We'll apply the deep cadmium yellow over the top of the hooker screen. We'll also develop the shadowed side using a dark brown. And then over the top of that, we'll push the contrast and value using a bit of black. Now we'll simply go over the entire mixture using Hooker's Green. This will allow those colors to blend and mix together without any smudging or smearing. We'll also use the Hooker's Green on the first lime to tone down the area of black. This will make the shadow feel a bit more natural on both of the limes. And just as we did on the first lime, we'll start to develop the highlighted areas using a light yellow green. We'll apply the color to create a texture that's similar to that on a lime. We'll also develop the tip of the lime. In this case, we'll start with white and then we'll add the sienna. We'll develop that further using dark umber and black. And just as we did on the lemon and the lime, we'll create areas of highlight using the white. We'll apply these marks so that they mimic the texture of the lime. Now we're ready to add the surface color, and in this case, I'll start with white. As this color is added, it gives us the opportunity to clean up the edges around each one of the objects. We'll go right over the top of the areas of shadow that we initially established. And as this color is applied, it will naturally mix with those darker values. We'll continue to bring the color all the way around all of the objects. You can see here how easy it is to define the edges at this stage in the drawing. I'll make consistent diagonal marks throughout the background. This will add a bit of interest to the drawing and put more focus on our objects. And to make our shadows feel a bit more natural, I'll use just a touch of blue. To increase the contrast and make the cast shadows feel darker, we'll add just a bit of black. Then the shadows can be softened with an additional application of our white pastel pencil. And now our still life sketch with pastel pencils is complete. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out five video courses, weekly live instruction, and over 6,280 minutes of art instruction, which includes video courses, downloadable eBooks, weekly live lessons streamed across the internet and lesson plans for teachers just click on the learn more now button to start learning today